Burkina Faso has stunned the world by completing this mega hydroelectric power plant. Africa's abundant resources hold the potential to drive a transition towards green energy. Burkina Faso's completion of a hydroelectric power station marks a significant milestone in this journey. This new development not only promises economic growth, but also enhances the quality of life for the local population by providing a safer energy alternative. However, the ease of this transition and the broader implications of this project are crucial to understand. The recent completion of Burkina Faso's hydroelectric power station is a groundbreaking achievement for the nation. This ambitious project is set to transform the energy sector, offering a reliable and sustainable energy source. The power plant aims to contribute significantly to the country's economic progress while improving citizens' living standards. The initiative for this hydroelectric power station emerged from Burkina Faso's strategic goal to diversify its energy portfolio and reduce dependence on fossil fuels. By tapping into the country's rich water resources, the project seeks to generate clean and sustainable electricity. Initial feasibility studies were essential in identifying suitable locations, assessing water flow, and evaluating environmental impacts. The planning phase of the project was a collaborative effort involving local and international experts, government bodies, and private sector partners. Detailed blueprints were crafted, addressing every construction aspect from environmental assessments to risk mitigation strategies. Ensuring minimal impact on local ecosystems was a priority, and measures were implemented to mitigate potential risks. The construction process of the hydroelectric power station was divided into multiple phases, each demanding specific skills and advanced technologies. The first phase involved building the dam, which required extensive excavation and earth-moving activities. Advanced engineering techniques ensured the dam's structural integrity, considering factors like water pressure, sediment load, and seismic activity. The second phase focused on constructing the power station itself. This included the installation of turbines, generators, and transformers, which are vital in converting the kinetic energy of flowing water into electricity. Precision and expertise were paramount during this phase, with teams working tirelessly to adhere to strict timelines. The third phase involved developing the infrastructure to support the power station's operations. This included constructing access roads, water intake and outflow channels, and housing for operational staff. Additionally, control systems and monitoring equipment were installed to ensure efficient and safe plant operations. Stakeholder involvement was a cornerstone of the project's success. Regular meetings with government officials, community leaders, and environmental groups were held to keep all parties informed and address any concerns. This transparent approach fostered trust and garnered broad support for the project. International partners also played a critical role, offering technical expertise and funding. Development agencies and foreign governments provided grants and low-interest loans, recognizing the project's potential to enhance regional stability and economic development. The successful completion of Burkina Faso's hydroelectric power station is a testament to Africa's capability to leverage its rich resources for green energy. Did you know the United States has only one operational nickel mine? This dependency on imports for almost all of its nickel needs poses a significant risk. Historically, the U.S. did not foresee the future importance of nickel, especially for green energy and electric vehicles, where nickel plays a crucial role in enhancing battery energy density and range. Consequently, the U.S. opted to outsource nickel production, leaning heavily on globalization. However, current geopolitical dynamics reveal that relying solely on globalization is precarious, as countries like China and Russia aim to disrupt the U.S.-centered global order. The demand for nickel has surged to unprecedented levels due to the rise of electric vehicles and the push for clean energy. Elon Musk has highlighted nickel as a major concern in scaling lithium-ion battery production, urging miners to increase nickel output to support green energy storage. Nevertheless, S&P Global Intelligence points out the difficulty in finding and discovering nickel. Currently, there are insufficient nickel mines in free trade countries, exacerbating the problem for the U.S. The United States faces a potential crisis with its limited nickel supply. The lone U.S. mine has restricted capacity and is nearing depletion. Addressing this issue requires a proactive approach with the need for high-confidence geological data to support new mining ventures. This situation underscores the critical importance of nickel for the U.S. economy and energy future.
Amidst this backdrop, Alaska Energy Metals, traded under the ticker AKMF, emerges as a key player. Investing in this company could be highly strategic, given the dire nickel supply scenario. Before investing, it's essential to recognize some truths about the company's prospects. Notably, another nickel company, Cobalt Metals, boasts prominent investors like Jeff Bezos, Richard Branson, and Bill Gates. Using advanced AI, Cobalt Metals identified the Nikolai project area adjacent to Alaska Energy Metals property as highly prospective for nickel mineralization. Cobalt Metals subsequently acquired a large tract of land next to Alaska Energy Metals Nikolai project and purchased critical data from Alaska Energy Metals. The CEO of Alaska Energy Metals, Gregory Bisher, emphasized the strategic significance of the Nikolai project, likening its geological and geochemical characteristics to Russia's Norilsk region, the largest nickel sulfide deposit globally. Bisher's strategic negotiation skills secured the property at an extraordinary value. The previous owner invested $30 million in drilling and exploration to define the nickel reserves, but Bisher acquired both the data and the land for a mere $1.8 million, a 95% discount. This acquisition positions Alaska Energy Metals advantageously, providing a substantial nickel resource base at a fraction of the cost. Contrary to potential assumptions, this makes Alaska Energy Metals shares accessible for ordinary investors. The strategic purchase and promising prospects could significantly impact the U.S. nickel supply chain, reducing dependency on imports and bolstering the nation's green energy transition. The U.S.'s reliance on a single nickel mine and the rising demand for nickel necessitate urgent action. Alaska Energy Metals, with its strategic acquisitions and potential for substantial nickel production, offers a viable solution. According to the CEO, the opportunity to acquire valuable claims presented itself in 2018. Initially, there was no immediate action, but the potential of low-grade disseminated sulfide deposits became apparent over time. These deposits represent the future of nickel mining, given the surging demand. The CEO's experience with this project, which initially brought him to Alaska, has come full circle. Over 25 years, he has explored extensively across Alaska, reinforcing his expertise in the region. Currently, Alaska Energy Metals has a market capitalization of only $14 million, significantly undervalued compared to similar companies with market caps ranging between $100 to $180 million. For context, Alaska Energy Metals owns a nickel resource containing 8 billion pounds of nickel, whereas Canada Nickel, with a resource of 13 billion pounds of nickel, has a market cap of $180 million. This disparity suggests that Alaska Energy Metals' market cap has the potential to increase substantially, aligning closer to its peers and benefiting early investors as the company advances its projects. The company is actively defining its resource, a critical step towards shareholder value creation. The CEO emphasized the significant potential of the Nikolai project in central Alaska. Historical drilling indicates a large deposit of nickel, along with accessory cobalt, copper, chrome, and platinum group elements. The company has conducted recent drilling, and the results are expected to reveal a substantial accumulation of nickel, attracting significant attention and investment. The CEO believes that Leo's investment partnership will soon invest in the company, offering an opportunity to purchase shares at a low price before a potential surge. The current share price is 10 cents in the US and 14 cents on the Canadian market, providing an attractive entry point for investors. The leadership team behind Alaska Energy Metals is robust, featuring Gregory Bisher, who previously founded Millrock Resources, successfully attracting over $50 million in capital. Recently, Mario Vetro joined the board of directors, bringing extensive experience from co-founding K92 Mining, a company that employs 1,600 people in Papua New Guinea and boasts a nearly $2 billion market cap. Vetro's addition, along with Ian Stalker, former CEO of K92 Mining, strengthens the team, demonstrating their capability to scale companies like Alaska Energy Metals. Private sector investors have also recognized the project's value, contributing additional capital and expertise. While some may question Africa's technological capabilities, the robust team and strategic planning suggest that Alaska Energy Metals is well-positioned to succeed. The inspection phase of the hydroelectric power station was crucial in ensuring the project's safety and effectiveness. 
Independent experts conducted a thorough evaluation of the power station's components and systems covering key areas. Engineers assessed the dam and power station structures, utilizing advanced imaging and testing techniques like ultrasonic testing and ground-penetrating radar to ensure the integrity of concrete and steel components. The turbines, generators, and transformers underwent rigorous testing to confirm their performance under various load conditions. The plant's control systems and safety protocols, including emergency shutdown procedures and flood control mechanisms, were tested for reliability. Environmental scientists monitored the impact on local ecosystems, evaluating water quality, fish populations, and downstream effects, with mitigation measures such as fish ladders and sediment control systems. The final inspection, conducted by representatives from government agencies, independent engineering firms, and international partners confirmed the readiness of the hydroelectric power station to begin operations. The comprehensive evaluation involved a detailed review of operational procedures, safety protocols, and maintenance schedules, ensuring that all systems met regulatory and safety standards. The authorization of the plant's operations marks the end of its construction phase and ushers in a new era for Burkina Faso's energy sector. Let's delve into the technical specifications and investments involved in this hydroelectric power station. Designed to harness the natural flow of the Saini River, the power station employs advanced technology to generate electricity efficiently and sustainably. With an annual capacity of 18 gigawatt hours, it is a vital component in meeting Burkina Faso's energy demands and supporting its expanding infrastructure needs. The plant operates with a high capacity factor, ensuring consistent power output throughout the year regardless of seasonal water flow variations. It features state-of-the-art Kaplan turbines, renowned for their efficiency in converting hydraulic energy into mechanical energy. These turbines are adept at handling varying water flows, making them ideal for the Saini River's conditions. The generators, coupled with these turbines, produce high-voltage electricity, which is then stepped up by transformers for long-distance transmission. High-efficiency transformers reduce energy losses during transmission, while advanced switchgear systems manage the electricity flow, ensuring a safe and reliable power distribution network. This system includes circuit breakers, disconnectors, and protection relays to handle faults and maintain an uninterrupted power supply. The power station is equipped with a centralized control room featuring modern supervisory control and data acquisition SCADA systems. These systems enable remote monitoring and control of the entire plant, ensuring optimal performance and rapid response to any issues. Automated control systems adjust the operation of turbines and generators based on real-time data, maximizing efficiency and minimizing the need for manual intervention. The dam associated with the power station stands 85 meters high with a crest length of 1.5 kilometers. It includes multiple spillways to manage excess water flow and prevent flooding. The reservoir created by the dam has a retention capacity of 1,050 million cubic meters of water, ensuring a steady supply to the turbines even during dry seasons. Financially, the hydroelectric power station required substantial investment, reflecting its scale and advanced technology. The project, costing $425 million, was funded through a mix of government grants, international loans, and private investments. The Burkina Faso government provided initial funding and secured additional support from international development agencies, recognizing the project's potential to promote sustainable development and energy security in the region. Private investors also contributed, attracted by the project's long-term profitability and the increasing demand for clean energy in West Africa. The financial structure involved a combination of debt and equity financing, distributing financial risk and attracting diverse investors. Long-term loans were secured at favorable interest rates thanks to the project's strong financial viability and reputable international lenders' involvement. Equity investments from private companies with expertise in renewable energy ensured financial and technical support. The hydroelectric power station's construction and operation have significant economic implications for Burkina Faso. The project created thousands of jobs during construction, providing employment opportunities for local communities. The operational phase will continue to generate employment particularly in plant maintenance, management, and local supply chains. The reliable electricity supply is expected to boost local industries, attract new businesses, and support regional economic growth. Hydroelectric power is cost-effective and sustainable. Once construction costs are covered, 
operational costs are relatively low, primarily involving maintenance and management. The power station is projected to generate substantial revenue through electricity sales, ensuring a strong return on investment for stakeholders. Environmental benefits, such as reducing greenhouse gas emissions and promoting sustainable water management, further enhance the project's long-term value. The successful completion of the hydroelectric power station paves the way for future investments in renewable energy infrastructure in Burkina Faso. The project serves as a model for similar initiatives, highlighting the feasibility and benefits of large-scale hydroelectric power generation. Expansion plans include installing additional turbines and generators to increase output, creating additional reservoirs and auxiliary dams for improved water management during droughts. This aligns with regional efforts to develop a more interconnected and resilient power grid in West Africa, allowing Burkina Faso to export surplus electricity to neighboring countries and strengthen regional cooperation. The project provides a valuable opportunity for local universities and research institutions to collaborate with international partners, fostering innovation and knowledge transfer in renewable energy. This includes initiatives to engage local communities and ensure they benefit from the development, such as community development programs, educational initiatives, and support for local businesses. Reliable electricity access will improve residents' quality of life offering better opportunities for education, healthcare, and economic activities. Environmental sustainability is a core focus of the project. Ongoing efforts ensure that the power station operates in harmony with the local ecosystem, protecting biodiversity and promoting sustainable water management practices. Environmental monitoring programs will continue to assess the project's impact and implement necessary measures to mitigate any negative effects. The final reception is planned for June 28, 2025, representing the ultimate endorsement of the project's success following rigorous operational testing and fine-tuning. By then, any remaining issues will be addressed, ensuring the power plant operates at its full potential. What does this mean for Africa's shift from nuclear energy to green energy? Africa, a continent rich in natural resources, stands at a critical juncture as the world moves towards sustainable energy solutions. Transitioning from nuclear energy to green energy in Africa is not just an environmental imperative, but a multifaceted strategy encompassing economic, social, and geopolitical dimensions. This shift holds profound implications for the continent's development trajectory, energy security, and global standing. Africa's rich endowment of resources, including uranium for nuclear energy, remains valuable. However, the global push towards green energy does not render these resources obsolete. Instead, it provides an opportunity for diversified utilization. Uranium and other minerals can still be exploited, albeit in smaller quantities, for various industrial applications and the gradual phasing out of nuclear energy. The focus shifts towards leveraging the continent's vast renewable resources, such as solar, wind, hydro, and geothermal energy. Transitioning to green energy can stimulate economic diversification, reducing over-reliance on a single resource or energy type. By investing in renewable energy infrastructure, Africa can create jobs, spur technological innovation, and develop new industries. For instance, solar panel manufacturing, wind turbine production, and maintenance services for renewable energy installations can become significant employment sectors, contributing to economic resilience and growth. One of Africa's most pressing issues is energy access. Despite its resources, many African nations face chronic energy shortages and lack reliable electricity access, particularly in rural areas. Green energy offers a decentralized solution that can address these gaps more effectively than centralized nuclear power plants. Solar and wind energy systems can be deployed in remote areas, providing off-grid communities with clean, reliable electricity and enhancing their quality of life. Green energy also enhances energy security by reducing dependence on imported fuels and the vulnerabilities associated with centralized power generation. Renewable energy sources are abundant and locally available, making countries less susceptible to global energy market fluctuations and geopolitical tensions. This autonomy can lead to more stable and predictable energy pricing, benefiting consumers and industries alike. The environmental and health benefits of shifting from nuclear to green energy are significant while nuclear energy is low in carbon emissions, it poses risks related to radioactive waste disposal, potential nuclear accidents, 
and long-term environmental contamination. These risks are particularly concerning in regions with limited regulatory oversight and emergency response capabilities. In contrast, green energy solutions such as solar, wind, and hydropower produce no harmful emissions or hazardous waste. They contribute to cleaner air and water, mitigating the adverse health impacts associated with fossil fuels and nuclear energy. This transition aligns with global climate goals, helping Africa reduce its carbon footprint and combat climate change. As the continent is highly vulnerable to climate impacts, adopting green energy can also bolster its climate resilience. The transition to green energy can have profound social impacts, promoting inclusivity and community development. Renewable energy projects often involve local communities in planning and implementation, fostering a sense of ownership and empowerment. These projects can provide training and education opportunities, building local capacity and technical skills. Moreover, Green energy projects can improve public services. For example, solar-powered schools and clinics can operate more effectively, enhancing education and healthcare outcomes. Electrification through renewables can also support small businesses and agricultural activities, driving local economic development and improving livelihoods. For Africa to successfully transition to green energy, robust policy frameworks and significant investment are essential. Governments must create conducive environments for renewable energy development through clear policies, incentives, and regulatory support. This includes establishing feed-in tariffs, tax breaks, and subsidies for renewable energy projects, as well as streamlining permitting processes. Investment in infrastructure is also crucial, including building transmission and distribution networks that can accommodate renewable energy sources, investing in research and development, and fostering public-private partnerships. International cooperation and financing will play a vital role, with developed countries and global financial institutions providing support through grants, loans, and technology transfer. Africa's shift to green energy also has geopolitical implications. As the global energy landscape changes, countries that are early adopters of renewable energy can position themselves as leaders in the emerging green economy. Africa has the potential to become a key player in the global renewable energy market, exporting surplus clean energy and renewable technologies. This transition can also redefine Africa's relationships with traditional energy partners. Historically, many African countries have been energy exporters, particularly of oil and gas, to global markets. Moving towards green energy can reduce this dependency, fostering more equitable and sustainable international partnerships. Additionally, it can attract new investment from countries and corporations committed to sustainability, further integrating Africa into the global green economy. Do you think this new project will pave the way for green energy? Should Burkina Faso be credited for taking the first step? Let us know in the comments. Are we witnessing a transformational stage in Africa? If you want to watch more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about, black culture, civilization, history, and evidence of how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.